Hello, everybody. Hey. Welcome to the Adobe Font Show, episode 28, if I am not mistaken. We yes. are here again. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you all for being here. Indeed. Ben, how are you doing? I'm doing well. We have a very nice, cool morning today. The, the, the sky was clear earlier. I went for a walk. It was very nice. And uh, and now it's a little cloudy, so, you know, but uh, overall nice. I'm not looking forward to the uber heat that's coming in the summer. So this springtime is great. It's going to be about 65 degrees today and feeling lovely. How about you? I'm feeling good, too. Good. And same springtime here. And then we're, I'm over in the Bay Area in California, but where is everyone else from? Let us know where you're from in the chat. Yes. And what the temperature's like. It's nice to rewatch old live streams because I see my outfits change with the seasons <laughs> and watching the ones where I'm wearing a big sweater now, I'm like, oh, how did I wear that? But you know Also I have strange. a I have a uniform, so you never know what the weather's like where I yeah, am. Yeah, I'm the only person the that can show you when the live stream exactly. was. <laughs> Um, I see we have people joining us, Oliver, Barbara, Doris, Cody, thanks for moderating. Samantha's joining us. Good to see you, Sam. Welcome. Sam says, love the hair, Ari. Oh, thank you. And I don't know if I said this, but I'm in Brooklyn. So let us know where you're from. Yes, ready to get the fonts party started. Let's get the fonts party started. Um, real quick for today's topic, quick audience poll. Just wanted to name any iconic or beloved signage or something in your neighborhood that's type related that you love. Just tell us what it is. Um, since we're doing a type tour today, I thought it would be uh, relevant. Ari, do you have anything off the top of your head that that uh, brings you warm fuzzies or makes you angry? It doesn't it have to be beloved. <laughs> it, it could just make angry. you angry. <laughs> Um, well, I'm kind of sad because there used to be a Coca-Cola sign in San Francisco. Oh, I but know that sign. they recently took it down. Oh. Um, and it was up my whole life. And it was always something that I saw as a really small child when my parents would drive home from the city at night and I would see the lights and um, it's no longer there. But so that makes me mad. Um, and then here in Oakland, where I'm living now, there's a couple uh, drive old drive through burger joints. So it's like a diner style sign that they've kept up. The restaurant no longer operates, but there's like a giant burgers sign. And it's very cool. I like that vintage style. Nice. Yeah, I love that Coca-Cola sign. I'm so sad to hear that it went away yeah. we had one like that not not as fancy as that with the lights and stuff but a big metal type sign and if you took the f or the g you know towards to go north in brooklyn it would be on top of one of the buildings and it was you could just had such a great view of it from from the subway um, when it goes above ground there's this chunk of the f and g that goes above ground and it would think it was kettle floors i think if i'm remembering the name correctly and big big slab serif metal type on a big metal grate you know big like f big metal frame and uh, i was so sad when that left um just not the same ride anymore you know yeah so we're getting some good some good um call outs to some cool signs sean said the or Sertich winkle banoff sign old hand painted font on a train station that sounds lovely um sean where is that yeah morton salt billboard in chicago zebars in nashville on broadway there's a fun country bear country bar signs oh yeah i'm sure there's a ton of cool stuff on that block <laughs> <laughs> oh that's in germany sean said cool i have to google all these signs i know i want to sure. save all these so i can look them up well keep those coming um yeah, we'd love to keep hearing some great examples. Um, yeah. And we're just going to kind of dive right into the topic today because there's plenty to go over and it should be a fun 
little bounce around. We're going to talk, I'm going to show some pictures I took in LA when I was on a recent trip there. And then we're going to kind of dive in and see if we can kind of recreate some of those looks with Adobe fonts, which will be fun. Um, and uh, for those of you new to Adobe fonts, probably not that many of you, but if you're new, Adobe fonts is 20,000 fonts that you get with any Creative Cloud subscription. So uh, that's insane. That's insane how many fonts you get. And our job here at Adobe Fonts is to kind of try to help you find ways of using them to the best uh, so you can create the best stuff um, and get the most out of type when you're using Creative Cloud. So hopefully this will have some helpful tips in that regard. Uh, so we're going to start with the type tour and I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, I was in Los Angeles recently, went out to dinner with a friend uh, in Burbank. This is right across the street from the WB Warner Brothers studio lot uh, in LA and stu near Studio City. And um, it's like a super old school steakhouse, a little bit of barbecue, as you can tell from the name, that kind of spot. And obviously the sign. It looks signage, like they have fine food. Yeah, well, I don't know what would give you that impression. It's weird. <laughs> and you know, it the price was so it wasn't it wasn't too high. It wasn't it was just fair. I don't know. It was just <laughs> very fair. You so, were treated fairly. Indeed. Um, and then inside they had this great neon sign co for cocktails. And I love the like messed up painted area in the background that gets kind of lit up by the pink. It just looks so old and cool and awesome. Yeah. Um, and then there are of course restrooms as one would, would assume in a restaurant. Um, didn't, Hey, never put that together. Restroom, restaurant. Interesting. Hmm. Anyways. You were very restful. You're restful. You were exactly. Um, and if you notice, this is ladies and in a different font than men, which is men. So I don't know why we didn't mm. do ladies and gentlemen or women, men. Who knows? It's a free for all here at the smokehouse. Uh, you know, all bets are off. Um, and then after dinner, I saw this fantastic uh, motel sign that is very L.A. And if we go to the next one, when you see with the palm trees and the whole deal, it is incredibly L.A. So cool. So Really Stay tuned because we recreated this. We're going to dive into this one for sure. Oh, Barbara said Cat's Deli in New York City. Excellent sign. Oh, iconic. Could, could not agree yeah. more. In fact, we'll have to do a New York uh, type tour at some point and an Oakland type tour, Ari, with all the stuff you're seeing. Yeah. This is near my parents' house in Burbank, and uh, I just love the big slab serif hamburgers. It's not even the name of the place. It's just that's so that's an advertisement, I guess, for what they offer, right? This is like one menu item. Fantastic. Go bold. I'm a burger person myself, so excellent. Why didn't they put all the menu items? That big, I know. Like, oh, <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, just make the building five times as tall and just, you know. <laughs> hot dog <laughs> you know the whole thing <laughs> french fries go for it um and then this is city of burbank as you can tell very art deco love this signage and these letters the definition of art deco exact yeah oh yeah uh couldn't be more frank's restaurant uh really big wide kind of slab serif and then of course the sign here is is condensed because we only have so much room and so we just took franks and shove shove that in there right and it looks similar to the hamburgers sign it does oh very the much style so. that they use yeah wide serif yeah kind of slabby chunky serif and i love the coffee yeah. shop probably if you want something like coffee shop check our check our funky tag on uh on fonts.adobe.com and the pies is definitely in need of a little bit of a scrubbing but uh but i appreciate the uh <laughs> The drop shadow they did there, very nice. Um, one, yeah. Oh, this kind of is similar to that sign I was describing, the kettle floors of just this really big metal, metal letters attached to metal framing on top of a building. And love this. This is uh, when you drive over the five freeway going from Burbank into um, kind of Studio City area on Olive. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that when you're young, like I was explaining with the Coca-Cola sign, when you're little and you don't know where you're going because you're just in the back of the car, you see certain things that make you get your bearings. Like, oh, we passed by that sign, so we're going to my aunt's house or yeah, something. Yeah, like they become landmarks. And, yeah, and yeah. Clever actually said, just threw it in the chat, old signs give me comfort. 
And I think that's one of the things that they comfort you with is you have memories of so many times passing by and just knowing where you are. A fun exercise is like walk around an area of your neighborhood where maybe there's a few restaurants and just see based on their signage and their logo and their, you know, whatever they have up, if you feel like going inside or or what your impression of the place might be and then go check the menu. Just things like that. Ooh, this place looks like, uh, you know, an American restaurant. And you go to and it's like, oh, no, this is this other stuff or whatever. So yeah. that's also really fun. Um, but yeah, I just love this kind of stuff this so this is an eagle rock and like this restaurant has been here a very long time and you know the people who live around here this is just that for them this is just comforting for them to see this i also yeah. like the that the y on cindy's barely made it on there it really just looks <laughs> like a u <laughs> um, it's just like an inch long enough to be a y <laughs> yeah, if it was one inch shorter exactly. but also cindy is like facing to the right or slanted to the right and then restaurants kind of a back slant so yeah. they're kind of like opposite i do like the yellow white little stripes behind restaurant though that has a, a great appeal and then this is the this is the sign on the street to let you know you know you're you're getting close from further away and there's just some great type on here the neon open sign the little owls that are perched on there you kind of notice them the script that's kind of oh, boxy wow. sans serif that's kind of square and then of course, like a real brush, brush scripty thing for steaks, chicken. So good. Yeah. And then uh, I went to the to Chinatown, which is close to downtown LA, to this sandwich shop. It's a sandwich, wax paper. Great place if you find yourself in LA and you want a really good sandwich, go check out wax paper. Great sign. And I, oh, I love this too. And this, this is probably um, custom, wouldn't you say, Ari? The Lasita is probably a custom, you know, hand hand lettered thing. It looks like it. If not, it's customized. Customized, yeah. And then and then Filipino rotisserie natural wine, little little probably a font of some kind. Here's another example Reverse of that. Reverse contrast. Yeah, I love that look. Yeah, so you can see um, the reverse contrast means that the thick parts of the letters and the thin parts are reversed from what you would normally see. So normally that A in La Cita would be heavier on the sides. And not um, top bottom. And yeah. thinner on the top. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks, it makes it really modern and cool. Uh, Clever in says, my opinion. Clever says, dang it. Now I want a coffee and a greasy plate. And I couldn't agree more when you see those diner signs, you know, those classic, you immediately are like, I want breakfast, you know, I want a cinnamon roll yeah. or breakfast or just, yeah, sausage and eggs and hash browns. Um, totally. And then this was a vintage store. And I just love this because it's a serif font, probably, but hand done, hand lettered. And then mm -hmm. that hand lettered script on the bottom with the gold and the black drop shadow. It just looks awesome. Uh, this is just so good. The colors here. <laughs> the L being out the top, uh, the yellow on the pink and the little teal from the other building that's in front of it. It just, the whole thing just totally works for me. This is in Chinatown as well. Yeah. And the spacing, they really, Oh yeah. I'm sure they thought about the spacing long and hard. Yeah. They wanted that G to really stand on its own, you know, <laughs> L I N G S. S that's how you would spell this. Yeah. Indeed. And then we have the beauty nail, just a, a really Ooh. chunky brush script. Love that. They sign. just like stretched everything how they wanted it. They're yeah. like, you're going to be condensed. You're going to be huge. You go here. You need to fit here. So I'm going to make you fit there. <laughs> uh, someone said that they're, they're now Miss LA from all these photos. I do too. So we're in the same boat together. Um, but I'm glad you're getting a little, a little sense of LA from these. Um, Heaven's Market is a little wine store just love that hand lettered right on the window there lovely and then okay now we're downtown some icon a few of these are very iconic in la and this eastern building is one of them that super art deco sans serif the gold the teal the architecture the whole thing right like this it doesn't get more art deco than that um and then similarly the state um love both of these the top and the bottom and then just for a close-up there this chunky this serif. So, cool. so good. 
um, yeah, a bunch of cool theaters on that on Broadway in, in LA. I think it's Broadway Avenue. Um, Clifton's another Art Deco look. And, you know, really Clifton's just is kind of a geometric sans serif, but you add that S there and it's just couldn't be more Art Deco from that. Um, yeah. So good. The little escalator. Oh, yeah. The escalator I, S. I've heard it called. <laughs> Los Angeles theater also awesome and i love the both the vertical and the horizontal and totally different type but still works They're, the colors are the same that's the key you see that mm. and I, I really do like how the the sign below this one is you know very straightforward but is surrounded by that ornate architecture and then that big larger sign really kind of matches that ornate architecture a little bit better but just yeah. looks awesome um so good and then the Orpheum, another scripty goodness. And if you look underneath the, the uh, what do you call that? The a marquee, marquee, you see kind of a hand lettered version of that, that they've taken some yeah. liberties there and done it their own style, but I still love it. I think it looks so good. And the colors here are fantastic as well. Um, seen a few shows there. Broadway bar, love the giant bee that's just falling into the street almost. Um, so cool. And the Y coming down. Look, it in general type you know being off of buildings coming down just looks cool um you don't see it that often but it looks great very art deco there as well the script and then here we have another great example of the vertical type and the horizontal with different but it just kind of fits somehow palace theater scene shows there great example and then just to make sure you know it was me really me there i am <laughs> LA, LA Jewelry Mart. And again, this is, I think, the final one in the list, but we have this hand lettered LA Mart, you know, on serif, slabby serif, and then this funky slabby serif going down. And that J in the top, I don't even think that's a serif at that point. That's just like a funky sans. And then the rest are these slab serifs. But it's half of a serif. Somehow it works. The other side isn't there. Yeah, somehow it works. <laughs> on the top. Um, yeah so that's a lesson in um going big like a lot of times people draw letters and then they add little serifs or little details and yeah. it's like sometimes just take that all the way like that j go it for it seems counterintuitive like would it look good if that's what kind of the top is all the way over but it looks great and it stands out when you're far away and you see it. No, and it gives it definitely a uniqueness, right? Because it's not just like the J doesn't really fit with the E or the W or the rest, but somehow it works if you, you just, and it kind of gives it a, yeah. it's, it's very unique. It becomes iconic because it doesn't blend in so well. All right. I think right. that's the end of the slideshow. We're we're off our tour. We're off the tour. Yep, um, we're back to Smokehouse. So that's the end of the tour. <laughs> Let us know your favorites if you if you had a favorite. But you know, it's I liked them all myself. So don't be too harsh. Yeah. You know. Um, what was your favorite? We'll look at the chat. Yeah. Let and us know we had you. a lot of people joining while we were looking at these pictures. So say hi if you joined in the last ten minutes. Um, we have Robert Sahar who said, I think Sahar, you said you were in Vienna. Oh, cool. Welcome. We have Jess, Bruce, Dana, Doris. Giselle. Yeah. And we had a question from Joseph. Just wanted to address um, asking if we have Chinese fonts with traditional and simplified characters. And yes, we do. If you go on the Adobe Fonts website, you can filter by languages and writing systems. I can switch to and your computer, Ari, and we could just show that real quick if you want to. Yeah, let me open up. I had started with this because I wanted to show you guys something about the Western tag. But here we have languages and writing systems, and then we have simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. So if you click on one of those, you're going to get a customized menu on the left that allows you to filter by classifications that are specific to Chinese. And then you'll get results on the right 
So yeah, we do have those options for you, Joseph. I'm gonna go back to all, just because we wanted to look at the tags. And I guess I can start with what I was looking at. The reason I was on the Western tag is because we were trying to recreate some of the signs that Ben saw. So for example, in the smokehouse, the <laughs> bathroom signs, ladies. So in order to find something like this, we, we identified that this style along with the men sign are both wood type um, typefaces traditionally used in kind of Western style things. Yep. So we named the tag Western so that it's easier to think of. Um, a lot of people might not know, might not think of the word wood type immediately. So uh, that's why it's called Western. And we went through here. Um, you might notice something new on our website is that images, specimen images of the typefaces are shown while you're browsing on this page, which kind of brings them to life. You can also see examples of how the type designer intended them to be used. Um, and I really love the Becker Gothics by Dunwich Type Founders because it's a modern take on wood type and super fun it's really fun there's different versions that are treated a little bit differently like the egyptian and the egyptian rounded are kind of less ornate and then concave has all these cool little spurs on it yeah and then tuscan has all these bifurcated terminals. almost like it's made out of logs or something Wood logs. Yeah. If you had a logging company, you could, could use it. Yep. But we used, whoops, I don't want to do that. I want to make it small. We used one of those for just to show as an alternative for ladies. So this one here, I'm going to show you look, what all of these fonts are. Look how close that is, too. Yeah. This one's called Old Lemonade, and it's almost the same. Um, and then if you are opening a little more modern restaurant, you could use Becker Gothic's concave yeah. and achieve kind of the same feeling. Um, but it's pretty amazing how close this is. And I think this is from Filmotype, the old lemonade one. Let me see oh, if I'm not mistaken. Old lemonade. Now, don't drink old lemonade, but use the font old lemonade, <laughs> I think is the... Oh, sideshow. Sideshow. Nice. But this style is very common. I'm sure there's tons of versions of it um, because it was originally cut out of wood and made and printed on things. And yeah. um, there's multiple digitized versions. But that's just one of the examples I don't want to dwell too long on the restrooms. We can move on. So we have ladies, men. What did we use for men? That was also wood. Manicotti. Manicotti, yeah. Yeah. Also in the Western tag, this is by DJR, David Jonathan Ross. I love this font. It's really cool. And also very close. I mean, yeah. really close. I actually like it better because yeah. it's chunkier. I'm and definitely then... a chunky fonts fan. Just, just <laughs> yes. I just am. Then we have the hamburger sign. Um, this is extremely close. What you found? Oh yeah. So that was also that is also in the Western tag, but I think I found it by using the properties, just looking for a slab serif. But still, it yeah. It, uh, Either way, if you search, so let's try this. If we go to properties, we go to all fonts. Properties here is what Ben is referencing. And then we look at width. I would say we're going to try to do the widest. 
And then we search for, we filter by slab serif. And then you could also just search for fonts that are only caps. And there it and is. There you go. There's Colt. That's the one I used. Um, yeah. And then we can go here. So this is just a quick version of, I don't know why it's not letting me type in here. Um, it's so weird. A quick version of how we came up with this, what Ben did to find Colt. And I'm, then this is actually if it really, would let me type. Then it's a I really would. fun exercise. By the way, if you if you have pictures of cool stuff in your neighborhood and you want to do a little graphic design exercise, that's a really fun thing to do. Um, finding the right font and, and yeah. kind of recreating the look. It's a just a all around good practice. And I think it, it's also a good lesson because most of the fonts you see on signs around your neighborhood have been around for a long time and have been used quite a bit. So it helps you familiarize yourself with styles that have been around forever. Yeah. And then, you know, like this style is very common. We even saw it on the other restaurant sign, that Frank's sign. So if you had to design some kind of vintage yep. restaurant thing, you could be inspired by that and say, oh yeah, I've seen this style on multiple old diners. So I know I can use that and it'll evoke that feeling. And then let's move on to Burbank. Wow, this is a great match too. This yep. was the definition of Art Deco, like we said earlier. And Ben found, I'm assuming you used the Art Deco tag. Yes. And then stumbled on this. Broadacre Light 3, which was the closest in terms of weights that I could find. Yeah. And, and outside of that R, the little the little leg of the R, it's almost uncanny how close that is. Yeah, it's very, very close. I would say the R makes it the B and the R make it a little more playful. Yeah. Whereas a public works department is not the most playful institution. Um, but I like that what it adds to it. And if you don't, if you wanted to match this more exactly, you could just convert this to outlines mm -hmm. and then customize that B, yes. make that top bowl of the B smaller and then change the leg of the R and then you're almost there. Yep. What's next? La Cita. La Cita. So we have this typeface called gopher in our library, which does have a reverse contrast, but it's quite um, subtle, subtle, but you can see like, for example, on the U, usually the U <laughs> is thinner on the bottom and thicker on the left side. Mm. So this stem on the left would be thicker than the one on the right. And then the bottom would be thin. And here the bottom is actually the thickest part. Yep. Um, same with the A. Usually the left side of the A is thinner. As I'm saying this, go look at a bunch of fonts um, and you'll see even sans serifs that you don't think have any difference in weight between the parts of the letter. They usually do this side is thinner and then the right side is thicker. And it's like, when you're writing an A, you start going upwards where your pen is releasing less ink. And then mm. on the right side, you go down and release more ink, which is why the um, contrast changes. So why usually an A is thinner on the left side. My camera got all blurry. blurry. No. Refocus camera. <laughs> it's because... I'm talking about these detailed topics. It wants me to move on. <laughs> <laughs> but I re we really like this Lacita sign. Oh, it's so this. cool. I love that. And then our favorite oh, lings. Yeah. Ben managed to recreate this pretty great accuracy. 
Yeah, that's um, pretty so dang close. You use Nobel Bold Condense. Yes. So you can find that one in our library. And um, I'm assuming you just put each of these letters individually and... And kind of line them up. I tried to line them up as best I could. It's close. Yeah, I feel like you could put even more space. I could have. I could have made the G even more alone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I wanted to go back. Maybe I, think... I won't spend time doing this, <laughs> but I want to move it. Uh, we want to spread it out. <laughs> For fun. It looks really uh, close. Maybe if we have time at the end. That we'll Nobel see. Bold condensed got us really close. Yeah. And then we have Beauty Nail. This looks really close. I think that if Beauty Nail wanted to hire us to redesign their sign, we, I would just do this. Yep. Yeah. Unless they wanted to go say, in a totally different direction. But yeah, I think we could handle it. Yeah. Um, I also like that it's a brush and it's like nail polish. Oh, that is cool. a really good point. And then we have Borman Steels. Yeah. So for this one, I think the best thing to do would be to go to the shaded tag and look at the options there. Oh, another one is the college tag. That also is good. Yes. So for the actual shapes, which are really square, um, reminds you of the letters and numbers on a jersey. So we have created a college tag, that's what it's called, mm. that has a collection of these squarish typefaces. And then we also have a shaded tag. So I think with a combination of those, so I'm gonna take these off, Oh, we just saw a shaded one flash before our eyes. If I go to shaded, then I can see all of these options. And these are regardless of style. It's just anything that has a shadow or layering. Yeah, so it. you might see something really surprising in here that you didn't, you wouldn't assume, but it's also a fun place to just kind of have a jumping off point if you don't know where to start because there's totally different yeah. vibes. I feel like Who's Your Daddy is a good, um, it's a cool option. Also, it has a great name. I know, it's so funny. So good. Like that could be an option. That's like the first thing we saw if you wanted to quickly recreate that style, but it doesn't have the square um, edges. So that's a sampling of what's in the shaded tag. Then what if we go to college and think, we look at- I think this is where I found that one because of that square edge. Yeah, um, so you can see all of these have these square edges on the letters. Yeah, basically stuff that would look great on a jersey. Um, Mm -hmm. or like on top of a this one is like a team totally you know a, bi a big team or the, like the scoreboard at a game you could see big yeah up there yep so yeah that's where we found this which is i think octon college octon octon college octon college and, and i it's... i created that shading just by putting a darker color and moving it to the right behind it for that one yeah because i wanted to give it that easy peasy depth so worked out yeah all right and what's next i think it's the last one you recreated yes los angeles and this one was hard to find because it's so unique that curved a and that g and the s they're very unique and i actually yeah. just stumbled on this one by accident i was looking for other so i tried to find a font that would fit this and i couldn't figure out which tags to use but i was looking at something else and then saw that a and i was like oh that's the one so it worked out but i think this is called bungee oh yeah bungee yeah bungee by djr yeah so good yeah it really evokes the same thing. 
it's not exactly the same, but Very I don't close. think anyone would notice if they didn't see the original. Um, and we had some comments in the chat. Um, Dana said, so nice to know about the college tag. I'm not sure I ever knew what exactly that was for. Mm. Yeah, I think it's hard sometimes to name them because everyone has different ways that they call things. <laughs> and it's like, should we name it by the attribute? Should we say blocky or square? Chunky, um, but then chunky could yeah. be something else. And yeah. Yeah. So, but it's good to get feedback. Like if you have ideas of a clearer way to name something, always let us know. Yeah. And you can use the user voice. We're going to show that at the end yeah. for giving us feedback as well. Any other comments, any recreations that you thought were your favorite? I think Ling's is my favorite. Um, although that Borman <laughs> steel turned out really good as well. Yeah, when I saw this, I was shocked at how similar it looked. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Ling's. I want to go to Ling's. Is it still open or is it an old sign? I don't I don't know because I was so far away when I saw that sign, you know, above the building. Yeah. That I have to I have to find that out because I why definitely want to go there. Why can't I click on it? What is happening? <laughs> what is Illustrator trying to do? Maybe if you ungroup it. Why can't it, I click to put... Right click oh, it's because you put it separate. We did talk about that. Yeah. I forgot. It's grouped. Um, I forgot. I have to ungroup. There we go. And now... And move each one with the little thingy why is it doing that oh because that's this is what happens when you know you're just doing something live and you're not thinking yeah. i just wanted to do this for my own entertainment i'm happy you did because this is <laughs> this is legit this is legit what's happening right now because this is how they made the sign i think they started like this and they were like wait these are, these are a little too far apart. And then they're like, let's move the eye. <laughs> <laughs> let's move the eye really close. <laughs> there we and go. And then, yeah, I think this is, oh my gosh, what is this selection doing? Oh, cause you had an image in the back. I should have locked that. What I is that? <laughs> <laughs> This is also what happens when someone else creates a document and then you don't know what's going on. And then I'm going to, oh, I can't group it. It's okay. So this is how they created it. This is the original. And then someone decided to move them a little closer. Together. And then, then we had the famous Ling sign that we all know and love now. Yes. And then there's a next one that I wanted to show. It's the Safari in sign. And this oh, is, yeah. this was my little project while Ben created all those other signs. I was like, I'm just going to do Safari in because <laughs> I love it. Um, Jess says that kerning makes me sad. I know that's why I'm making a joke out of it. So sometimes when you can laugh at tragedies, it makes <laughs> it better. <laughs> Oh, Sean says the sign builder made it Linux <laughs> and then they went, oops. Whoops. Yeah, maybe there were other letters in there. And they were like, they took them out. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Dana loves this sign too. Awesome. So to come up with the similar font to what I saw here with Safari, I went back to the website and I went to the cursive tag. So the reason I went to cursive rather than calligraphic to find a script font is I wanted to find something that didn't have a lot of contrast. So, you know, with calligraphic, oh, I don't want it to say hamburgers anymore. That would be weird. <laughs> with calligraphic, 
it's more based on a pointed pen and has a lot more delicate details. Yeah, the edges get and really I didn't thin. Want that. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted something that was more what we call monoline or um, just more of a uniform weight across the letters. Almost like you're doing a script with a chunky, you know, chunky Sharpie, you know? Yeah. So I looked through these um, and I will say I had one font in mind that I knew before I looked at all of these because I was thinking I want something that looks, the first thing I thought when I saw this is I want something that looks like chrome lettering on a car. Yep. And I knew that we had one of these because I had just seen it before. But then I'll show you what that is. But then besides that, I just wanted to find an alternative. So I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but I'll tell you that I did find Kinescope which is the one here that I've selected. Let me just show you. Kinescope by Mark Simonson. That was one of the ones I saw when I went through um, those cursive fonts. And I thought that that could work. It's not the same by any means, but it does have some of the elements of this. And if the Safari Inn asked me to redesign their sign, I would consider using this. I think and they then, would be happy with that choice. I'm just going to say I that hope right so. now. Yeah. Then the one that I had thought of that looks like a chrome lettering is this one called Raceway by Kabarga Type. Mm. Um, and I knew that Kabarga Type had a couple fonts like this. So that's how I found this. And so I, I included the original just so you can see what it looked like. And then above is how I customized it. So I converted it to outlines and I just moved everything closer together, basically. And then took the, very long. <laughs> the ascender for the strokes. F. Is that, is, that, is that what it's called? The ascender on the F? Yeah. Um, you put you stretched that out too. Yeah. So I just created outlines and then I started um you know with the a i just selected you know these last points here moved it in yeah kind of just mo kind of made I it did. kind of normal spacing instead of the you know very yeah. very tracked out spacing yeah and then i moved the f whoops a little bit down and you know increase that ascender height as you said so that's kind of how it started and then i created i just deleted these s and i deleted the s because that s is very we needed this, specific yeah we needed this lightning bolt s so i just recreated that and that's how we ended up with this and it's not exact but i think it's very very close if you wanted to make this exactly like the original it would be very easy to do um, but i wanted to keep some of the raceway elements still there i'm getting all, then... all kinds of vibes here and the chat is too we've got like i want a tiki drink you know, kind of um, drive-in movie. Jake said drive-in movie. Even though this is for an inn, this still feels like, you know, an old school big sign you'd see at a drive-in movie theater kind of yeah. thing. Um, yeah, it's so good. Jake actually said he saw the font Cocktail Shaker. Oh. When I was browsing through. So maybe we should look for that. <sighs> Let's see. 
Oh, there's so many that could work when you look through it like this and you're right on your canvas. This is a great way to search. Ooh, Armstrong, Armstrong. also has that kind of Yeah, vibe. so that's also one that I had in my head for that chrome vibe, but it didn't actually work. It just has the same kind of idea. Yeah, it's not as scripty. It as does have this version this that is kind of slanted, which makes it scriptier. But um, let's see, cocktail shaker. Cocktail there we go. Ooh. Yeah, so here I'm on my Find More tab in my font menu, and all I have to do is click Activate. I don't have to go to the website every time I want to find something. And then what if we did the wavy gravy icon? And then we could also find, you know, right here, if we like that, we can find something new. The reason why um, this is taking a second is because the font is activating. So I can use it. Oh, wow. All these things are happening right now. Um, and then I'll just have to search for it to find it. It activated, so it should be. My external keyboard stopped working, so I have to. Oh, no, did it run out of batteries? To... <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's battery power. But yes, this, oh, gosh. There we go. Um, yes, Cocktail Shaker does look pretty good. It does. So what if we... I'm feeling very daiquiri, well. you know? It feels very daiquiri. Daiquiri-esque. Feels daiquiri-esque, yeah. Daiquiri-esque. Um, if we just took these off, whoops. I'll leave this because we don't, I don't want to type it right now. And then I moved, change the color. Whoops, need to bring it forward. It's hanging out in the back. Need to bring it all the way here. Classic layers. <laughs> and then, Definitely need to make it a little bit smaller to fit. And then maybe rotate it a little bit. Everything's a little bit. Rotate it a little bit. We could even achieve, I mean, without that S, maybe we don't need that lightning bolt S. It looks legit just S. like that. Yeah, I think it does. I'm gonna make it a little brighter. Yeah. And then what does the eye look like? That's the real test. Oh, really? Ooh, Ooh, that's pretty good. I don't know if it works for a sign, though. What does everyone think? Because are there any alternates for that eye? No. Dang. This one doesn't have alternates. And you can see because nothing came up when I highlighted it. And then if I look at the glyph panel, it's just limited to these. So the only eye is that. But, you know, as I said, with everything that I did, you can just convert it to outlines, which is super easy. And then we can just delete the eye and put our own. How about that? How about that? How about that? Or we can use, what if we used the kinescope eye? I feel like that could work. What if we did that? And then we have this. We do this, we move it over. Mm. 
Oh, bring it up. Me. Bring it front. Uh, bring it front. Bring it front. <laughs> Rotate it a little bit to match. I think it's working. I think it's working. I too. mean, this it's interfering a little bit, but what if we just did this? Nailed it. This, oh no, I rotated. <laughs> Problem solved. Just move it what away. What if we add a little Ling's energy to this? Oh, yeah. That works, right? The same designer that did Ling's. Oh, yeah. Does Safari in. <laughs> hey, it, uh, it just became a little more memorable. So. <laughs> um, I wasn't reading the chat, but I see that. Jess said she liked the font, but she didn't like the eye. Um, Jake said, what if you use the one? Oh. oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah. And Jake was giving me shortcut keyboard shortcuts. You know, when you're live, like when I'm live, I can't think about <laughs> yeah. like ways to do things. I'm just like, click, click, click. Why isn't it doing what I want? But I'm sure all of you are cringing when it takes me a million years to move something over. But I think this looks great. Um, there's so many options and it it still has the same vibe, but it it has like the cocktail shaker font, completely different shapes, but it still you know gives you the same feeling. So I think that's cool. It's cool to find something that matches perfectly. It's very satisfying, but I think it takes a little more expertise to find something that isn't exactly the same, but brings you the same feeling. Yeah. And that takes some time. And I think that's, yeah, that's worth practicing as well. It's just, again, it's fun to like take a bunch of pictures and then just try to quickly match it as, fa as fast as you can and just to get the spirit of it right even if it doesn't match exactly, if you just get the spirit of it, so. Yeah, I actually wanna try the one to see what it looks like. Mmm, maybe. That works better than the one that it had, especially for this kind of sign. That could Sahar totally work. says, um, the type designer of this may be a native German speaker because the eye with a big loop and the number one with a giant top is very German. Oh, yeah, this eye is very unique. It, it does look like an O, as people said. And like a nine, like a big brushy nine. Yeah, what is the nine? Oh my gosh, the nine is like the same. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought that an eye could look exactly like a nine? Never know what you're going to find. But the eye from the other font matched pretty well. And I feel yeah, like the, if, if we just the edits you made to Raceway made it look very, very similar. But you did have to tweak that quite a bit, right? Yeah. Both the I and S I just made just drew them custom. Completely new. Yeah. Yes, they were custom drawn bespoke. Bespoke and vectors. Then... <laughs> Bespoke. And then the way that the ends connected, I actually changed. You can see that they originally had this connection at the bottom. Yeah. And then made it more scripty. Yeah, I just kind of matched what it had nice. on the original. Well, we are rapidly approaching the end of our stream. Yes. Jake says, Who needs legibility when you have vibes? I couldn't have said it better myself. That is the quote of the stream for sure. Totally agreed. Um, let us know. Although signs really need to be readable. So. That's true. But <laughs> but maybe maybe the vibe draws you in. And then once you're really looking at it, it becomes legible because you're really focused <laughs> on it. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed this stream, please follow us at behance.net slash Adobe Fonts. We announce all of our episodes there. You can also find all of our past streams and episodes there as well. There's a fun back catalog of 27 previous episodes that have all kinds of cool topics so you might find something cool there and then if you have any feedback for us you should absolutely go to adobefonts.uservoice.com our team checks that and looks for 
recommendations from our audience, feature requests, bug issues, just things that you find frustrating or exciting or that you want to see from Adobe Fonts, let us know there. Our product team is watching that um, on a regular basis. And you can also tell us anything about the stream that you'd like. You can also message us on Behance um, if you have any topic ideas or anything, really. We're, I mean, we're ready. So whatever you want to say, we're here. We're all ears. We're all ears and all eyes because I'm going to be reading. So, you know, <laughs> we're ready. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, this was a great stream. Let us know. Uh, yeah. Thank you again, Ari. Fantastic job. Um, and here we are. End of episode 28 once again. Oh, Cody yes, just dropped the links in, in the, in the uh, chat. So check those links. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.